Okay, guys, we are at the um, annual convention of the, what do, what do they call it? And, um, hello, <laughs> we've known each other for a while and we've decided to do an impromptu little chat about, we're both, uh, you, what disability, you're? Benoni amputee. Benoni amputee and I'm a, a TK amputee and uh, so we have a lot in common and I think we, all we want to do is just have a little chat about that and connect with each other and share our story with you. So maybe we can start by, you want to tell us what happened to you or how did you get to the point where you had your leg or lost your leg or? I had medical negligence, um, unfortunately these things happen and my ankle was fractured without permission and then I got salmonella infection in the bone which caused a seven year downhill spiral with septicemia. <laughs> Infections, I think that's a big problem in amputees it and is, most huh? of the causes of amputation is infection. It is and I wonder how many people have gone to a hospital where they could have had a lot less damage or uh, a, uh, a more beneficial amputation that ended up with something worse because of... Definitely. Yeah. Um, like I said, the infection was in my ankle and it took me literally seven years before I decided to amputate. Mm. Well, actually I had no option but to amputate. Mm. And in the process you honestly destroy the rest of your body by donating bone, donating your own blood, donating skin, skin mm. bone marrow. And but I had a... We had a, a, a Correctural procedure done to okay. straighten the bone after oh, okay. I had so many operations as a child, which resulted in a non union for two years. Okay. And then the infection came with the external fixator. Okay, and you're a ballerina, right? You I used was, to do. I don't say so it kinda, Yeah, and it ruined, so that, I mean, it ruined, it completely changed your life. It is, especially if you grow up and this is your main focus, especially if it's an identity. It's your identity, exactly. It's your label. And then when that gets taken away, you have you like lost your identification. Your world changes. Huh? Your world changes. Who you are, who you identify with in yourself. That's uh, something I can identify with. It's uh, my identity was very much in my physical ability, in my ability to run, swim, jump, and yeah. completely lost that identity. And of course, I, I think we I resorted to all kinds of self-destructive means yeah. to try and cope with that. Abusing medication and alcohol and and uh, yeah, very destructive. You do, I think, because it's uh, you do become self-destructive, but also pain is such an individual thing, and I think people will do extreme things not to experience pain. And either if it's physical, if it's emotional, people mm. go to extreme measures not to experience pain yeah. and to self-medicate. With and to get blunted, not to feel. Yeah, yeah. And when we stop, all the feelings come rushing back. And like you, I think you said that it felt back, like you were yes. bipolar. Or something. I felt bipolar when I stopped abusing all the pain medication and anti-anxiety tablets mm. with alcohol. Mm. Um, I remember the first few months I experienced like real sadness and real happiness. With you would watch an advert mm. and you'll become emotional. Mm. What is going on with mm. me? I'm like hormonal. My mm. emotions is <laughs> all over the show. So yeah. yes, it you do experience, but then you really feel alive. Yeah, you start yeah. feeling real alive, and that's one of the reasons why I do not like to take any things that kind of blunt me. Still, any mild mind altering substances, huh? Not at all, because yeah. I want to be here. I want to be aware. I want to be awake. I want to be here in the living real world. In the now, yeah. The question I've been wanting to ask you is what do you think, um, I mean there'll be quite a few amputees and potentially disabled people watching this, this video, and um, what do you think the, for, for somebody who's considering an amputation, what do you think the most single most important thing is that they need to, to consider, I mean that's a tough question to ask because there's so many things, but in, in your experience what do you think is really important to, to consider? I do, I do speak a lot to people that is considering amputation that approaches me about how is it really, you know, mm. like being honest. And I always say the biggest question you need to ask yourself and the doctors is what quality of life do you want? Mm. What is a quality life to you? Mm. Are you happy with just moving around home, going to the shops now and then, 
mm. or do you want to be active? That is a do really, you, really important consideration. So it really goes about what do you define as this is a good quality life? Yeah. Am I pain free? Mm -hmm. Number one, because we mm. know where pain leads so to. So pain free would be absolutely the first. Absolutely so the entire one. procedure should be determined by what will leave you with the least residual pain. Yes. Okay. And I also, I always, what I see a lot also is most traumatic amputations, which they do to save a life, is usually done in a very rushed manner. So the finer things with the neurons and where they take all the nerves and mm. where they put the score, all the important things is not being considered. So the first thing that I always say is go see your, go find an orthotist. See what um, components do you need in a prosthetic yeah, foot yeah. so that it doesn't matter how short you go and how much of your own body you save if mm. it's too short you can't mm. fit a proper prosthesis in it mm, mm. You, you need to fit a sock you need to fit the foot mm, mm. all the components of a prosthesis mm. let an orthotist or prosthetists show you actually go before the operation discuss this with the doctor that they can see you need to amputate here that it's not too short not too long so so maybe i can lift my leg and you can you can kind of illustrate what you what you mean if you've got all these components that needs to fit in yeah like you've got the torso foot this is quite a high foot yeah so if you've got a very low amputation you yeah. won't be able to wear this foot which is going to restrict True. you with prosthesis yeah. also all the other components where you adjust your alignment and where you walk you need these components to have a prosthetic uh, proper foot. So it's all about the balance, the foot, the head, the knee, the socket you needs need to come together. Everything needs together. So if you've got a very funny amputation that is too long, you'll be able only to fit feet that doesn't have a lot of leverage for yeah. movement. Yeah. And not yeah. an active foot. So you really need to fit your components in. And also where your scar tissue is going to be. Yeah. That you don't walk on the scar tissue. Also um Okay, to keep the pressure off the... Yes, the and if they actually direct all the nerves and things, your phantom pains. Because after most um, revisions, the first revision after a traumatic amputation, people's phantom pains yeah, become yeah. severely less or almost disappear. I know mine, mine really went away. So you're suggesting that you did your first amputation and you had a lot of phantom pain after that and you went for a revision? I had a and revision, yes. Subsequently, and it was had, about less. I had... I've got, I've, I've, I'm very lucky. I don't have any phantom pain. Mm, both, I've got both, funny both, sensations both. and I don't have any phantom pain. Because when what you read a lot about groups is how that has a very long-term effect. And I think that can make you so negative. Because if you're still experiencing the pain because of, you know, you amputated to be rid of a certain pain and yes. you're still experiencing it, I think that that can be a very disheartening situation. It kind of defeats the object and I'm just thinking on social media when you look at Facebook or and you listen to most of the complaints it's either phantom pain or, or pain that most pain. people that creates a negativity that you, that you get to see on, the, on social media. And also like I said with your scar tissues because that can be very uncomfortable because scar tissue is completely a different type of tissue than normal mm. skin. Um, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, So if true. that score is not on the right position, you are not going to be able to walk on that. Yeah, way. yeah. So see an orthotist, prothetist that you feel comfortable with and discuss with them and your orthopedic surgeon that it's a team effort. If, if they just cut your leg and put the scar tissue underneath, you're walking on that scar mm. tissue. And I've seen that many times too. And that is also an effect. So that when you have your orthotist and your or your prosthetist working together with your orthopedic surgeon. Mm. That's a team. Mm -hmm. It's a multidisciplinary team. Surely it needs to all come together, yeah. It has to come together. So I really think there's a need to educate more orthopedic surgeons on where to amputate because I think they, they don't understand the confidence of mm. prosthesis. And mm. I mean, we all know that you get all your active blades and things. You need a proper space to fit mm. that in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pursue athletics and you've got a very short stump, you're not going to be, be wearing a blade. So it's all about, you? so you, you said it's all about the lifestyle that would determine so if you're office bound, you're not that mobile, maybe older or and if you're more active to, to be sure to take all of that into, con, into con, consideration. And I'm just thinking from the um, psychological perspective, what is the one thing you think? So that's from the physical perspective, from the psychological perspective, what would you suggest um, they pay um, attention to? Emotionally. Mm, emotional, psychological. I think work through your grievement procedures 
on your own space and time. Okay. You're going to get be in denial. You're going to get angry. You're going to get sad. Yeah. But you're, it's it's a loss. I mean, you are losing a part of your body yeah. has died. So you're going to go through grief, man. So you need to work through those processes on your own time, but don't take too long because you mm. need to get on with life. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. make sure you go through all of them. And I suppose support to identify your support. Your support be system is immensely important. Important. Your people have to be on board. The people that surround you, your your Involved friends, your family. Your family. Yeah. Everybody has to be on board because. They have to understand the whole procedure. I mean, sometimes we, if you have an off leg day, mm -mm. or it's just malfunctioned, <laughs> you have an off emotional day. Sure. And when you feel emotionally drained and tired or depressed or anxious, for some reason for me, it affects my walking. Yeah. So it's really got the physical and emotional thing goes hand in hand. So, yeah. so your emotional affect your mobility and your overall, just your overall yeah, so state of mind. So just be kind to yourself. Another question I want to ask you is that you use OSER, um, OSER components. Why OSER? I have been on so many prosthetic feet and as a woman, or I think as men too, you, you know, we all know shoes because we can't walk barefoot mm. every day mm. has a that's, big effect. So yeah. even even if you, I, my daily pumps that I wear, that's the flat, you know, like the ballerina shoes, they are flat. They do differ too, and that little slight millimeter can make you tilt forward, it's backwards, true. and cause a little injury. So it's a safety issue. Yes. Okay. So I do the Osa Proflex LP a lot. Mm. It's a new adjustable foot, which also have an energy heel, mm. so it's much kinder on your residual limb. Um, your balance is beautiful. You spend a lot of time before you go over your foot. It's mm. got a nice heel to toe roll to rotation. Okay. So. But you always have to work through your orthotist or your prosthetist. All right, so that's and that's a, that's another issue. It's really important is the to make sure that you have a very very good try and form a lifelong alliance with a specific person that gets to know your emotional your your um, extremely important. Yeah, yeah. Your orthotist, I think, or I always think that they do a lot of psychology too because they, huh? they know when you walk in there and you're not happy with your prosthesis, they know. They're going to deal with a difficult person. Yeah, and yeah. you need an orthotist where you can be angry yeah. and upset and walk in there and feel frustrated yeah. and know that it's okay. So this is really something that you form a good mm. bond with. Because it's someone you're going to spend quite a lot of time with. Yeah, and you, you kind of get an immediate feel. I've had, I've, I've seen, um, I think, what is it, two or three people. And I, and I recently, um, Eugene, and some are... The, the, the space that he works in was very reassuring. It's beautiful. The, his manner, his kind of, I guess, bedside manner, you can call it. Just something about that inspires confidence um, and the, the way that he does and walks, talks you through it. And, and very importantly, I think the, the, the training, almost the training and care that he gave yes. me afterwards really inspired me to, to, yeah, to... And also that they're accessible. Ac yeah, yeah. An emergency, they're there. Yeah. And um, also... Like, like this week, I really struggled to see my orthotist, Yoko. I, I struggled to see him because I worked till five. And he would come to my work to do final adjustments. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that extra little mile. Because, you, like I said, this is your go-to guy. Mm, so, mm. you, like I said, it's a lot about trust. Yeah, you need to yeah. trust this person because this is the guy who's going to make you walk, be able to function in a normal society, mm. to be able to do things. And if they can't do that, that that's a problem because that affects your whole life. So it sounds like you need a relationship with yourself, you need a relationship with your surgeon who's going to perform the, the amputation if it's elective, um, and then uh, to, uh, with your uh, prosthetist, as well as with um, some sort of, uh, with, your, with your support system, um, as well as potentially with the counsellor or, yes. or something along those Definitely. lines that can take you through the whole grieving process. Yes, if you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. See a counsellor, see a psychologist, mm. if it's necessary, do that. Get get everything from life that you can. And if you need help, ask. ask. That There's I always... And I'm going to share that sentiment with you. And that, from my side, is the single most important thing I want to share with, with, with you guys out there, is ask for help. Um, that pride, um, um, feeling that you're going to put people out, you don't. We, 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 we don't. People really want to help us. And I think mm -hmm. it's so important that asking for help, that problems really start when I cannot get myself to the point where I go, please help me. Before we finish, what is the single most important message that you'd like to send out to people watching this video? 
be alive, be part of this living world Live. and do everything mm. possible to keep yourself healthy, mm. be part of this living world because I think most of us have obviously had hardships before an amputation. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it doesn't come easily. Mm -mm. Um, so, and also be kind, be kind be to kind. yourself. And also, the more comfortable you are with yourself, the more comfortable people are around you. Yeah, and, and getting involved with support groups, your views on that? Definitely, because someone can make a difference in your life and you can make a big difference in someone's life just by sharing an experience, a mutual feeling. Mm, mm. So get involved with other amputees, because we share quite a lot of common issues, problems, mm. fears. So to feel, to feel understood. And to feel part of something. And to feel a part of something. What about negativity? Because on some social media, there's a lot of negativity, and and um, it's 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 quite soul destroying. To to first time I went on, and and a lot of people kind of put it out there that it's a terrible space to get into, and it and it's not it's not that. It depends on how we approach it. But your your views on that? I think because the amputation society is quite small. I think it can be condensed. Everything from us is condensed. Like amplified. You know, everything is amplified. Yeah. We don't yeah. get pain. We get severe pain. We, yeah. we. I think we are. Because I, I always think it's like a near-death experience. So there is something additional and extra to you. So the, mm. everything is amplified. So if you feel that energy, because I always say we mirror. Mm. We mirror people's behavior. We mirror people. If someone smiles at you, you smile mm. back because you're mirroring it. It's, smile. it's neurons. <laughs> and um, so surround yourself with people where you can mirror positivity. Okay. You can withdraw that from. Okay. Because negative energy drains us and that will just affect you all day. So when you feel negative in a situation, mm. get yourself out of there. Mm. Surround yourself with other people mm -mm. and get rid of that negative energy because that is going to drag you down. Absolutely. It is. Okay, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the interview. We'll be back with some more talks. I uh, think maybe we'll do a, something on health, exercise, what's, what's good for us and maybe what's not good for us. But it's great. It's great to have this talk. Thanks, okay. Chris. Enjoyed we'll see it. Ya. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, that's cool. It.